All right, welcome to Rock Vegas, everybody. Um, it's Glenn Rockney, um, not just Glenn Rockney today. I do have a guest. Um, I'm gonna spare your guys' ears for uh, um, having just one voice for an hour um, today. I have uh, somebody that I followed for a long time, somebody that I trust when I see something on the field for him to validate it with all 22 film and stuff like that. I, I, uh, I wanna know if what I'm seeing is true. And uh, he's a contributor to Silver and Black Pride. Um, just blog baby as well is that correct blog, um, yeah. yeah it's uh bd williams uh what's your twitter handle can you go ahead and say that real fast it's uh bd williams 18 is the yeah. twitter i w i would bet that 80 percent of the people that listen to me follow you but oh, if they cool. don't we need to get that the middle of that venn diagram going you know what i mean <laughs> and uh and you guys need to follow him uh we w we just wanted to talk about um kind of first and second year players on the Raiders today. Um, we wanted to focus with that, but I do have a couple other questions for you. Uh, first off, how is, uh, how's everything going for you right now? Yeah, man. Uh, first of all, uh, awesome introduction. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me on, you know, yeah. you're, you're a great Twitter follower yourself. You oh, know, boy. that's, that's oh, how boy. we started this, you know, uh, online, uh, relationship, so to speak. So yeah, but, uh, thanks for having me on. Everything's going great. Hope, hope, you and your family, everyone's doing great too. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're good. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a crazy time. I'm hoping we get like uninterrupted NFL this year. So that's kind of, hopefully we're not just talking about this for nothing. It, but, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I was we'll just thinking see. about all the wasted content I might have. And you, too, <laughs> and you too, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, but at least your stuff right. is like, last year's film is last year's film. It's still good for next year, right? But uh, um, so off season, right? Before we get into all this kind of stuff, what do you think about the Raiders off season this year? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's fun as a fan. I'm, I, you know, I consider myself a fan first and foremost. I know I'm, I'm like a Twitter know-it-all. I put a lot of uh, film on, on my mm -hmm. Twitter timeline, but you know, I'm a fan first and foremost. So uh, I'm excited, you know, always about, you know, the draft picks and seeing potential. And when I, you know, look at their film and, I uh, think about, you know, the direction that the Raiders are going. So it's always time for every fan base, you know, not just the Raiders to, uh, to be excited about it. It's a shame that no fans can, can go to the yeah. stadium in, in Vegas this year. Cause that would have been, um, you know, that, that'd have been cool to have fans in probably, you know, the best stadium now in the NFL. But um, other than that, you know, uh, I, I'm excited about, you know, draft picks and, and free agents and, you know, all that stuff. It's, it's been good for me. Just because as soon as they sign someone, you know, I, I start diving into yeah. the yeah uh, into the all twenty two on them. So um, just keep keep kind of keeps me busy and uh, keeps me excited about it. You know. Yeah. So when you when you get a free agent, right? Are you is there any time that the film not like lies to you, but can you be persuaded by like a couple good plays on film? Uh, see, like that's the thing. I don't I don't really like highlights. I don't really get into um you know um. All, all the good things I want to kind of see who they are, you know, holistically as a player. Right. So I, I look at everything, you know, um, I look at if it's a, you know, a, def a defender, I look at against the run, against the pass, uh, man coverage, zone coverage, you know, if it's a pass rusher, you know, I, I look at them. Uh, I want to see them have a lot of different type of moves to win on. And if I'm seeing a guy who wins in the same way, you know, um, whether that's on offense or defense, um, then, you know, I kind of get some question marks in my head. Maybe this guy is kind of one dimensional. Um, so I, I try to look at it and I try to, you know, when I, when I post these, um, uh, you know, when I post some feeds or threads on Twitter, uh -huh. I try to look at, you know, the good plays and the bad plays. For instance, like when, when I was watching Corey Littleton, you know, I saw a lot of, a lot of good things against the pass. Sure. And then, um, but against the run, you know, I, I got to be honest with Raider Nation. Um, it wasn't, um it's super exciting blown film. off the ball you could say he was getting blown off the ball yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, there's not there, he doesn't have a whole bunch of great snaps against the run as as much as he does against the pass and at the end of the day it, it is a passing league and um linebackers who can cover are more rare than linebackers who sure well. you know, we know uh, that yeah i think we know that as raider fans that <laughs> right. that linebacker yeah curtis lofton isn't covering anybody you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah yeah nick roach any guys like that like just man it I don't know. To me, personally, as a Raider fan, I'm okay with sacrificing a little bit in the run game because last year they were pretty good at stopping the run. Yeah. And it, yeah. what did it mean, right? Right, right, right. Defenses right. are in their nickel package. They're saying now what, like, or at least their sub package 70% of the time, damn near. You know what I mean? And teams yeah. pass on first down. It's not just a you, – you can't just throw your run right. unit out there and expect to make a stop on first down. So, right. like, um, that, that, that's good. Is there any – 
one free agent, I, I, you said Littleton. So maybe someone besides Littleton uh, this year that they picked up that you see making pretty big contributions. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Malik Collins, I know it's not a sexy position playing defensive tackle, but, uh, you know, that, that guy, that, that guy's an incredibly good player. There's not m- many holes in his game. Um, yeah, it, especially, um, you know, if, if he's in the AFC West where, where they're passing the ball as, as much as they do, I think that this guy's going to have a breakout yeah. year. Um, so I, I'm super excited to watch um, Malik Collins this year and see him kind of make a name for himself. What does he do that's so special? Because – like I see them, I see that like he's got really good hands. It seems like he's got really good hands. He's kind of twitchy, but is there something else I'm missing that, that makes him win that, that well? Because you see him like against, I think new England, he had this crazy game, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mm-hmm. against new England, he was just beating the shit out of their, out of their O line. Yeah. It, so yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of twitch, a lot of violence to his game, you know? Um, and like, like you're saying with the hand usage, he's uh, got a great motor, you know, doesn't take any plays off. Um, and, and a lot of things that I'm watching on the film, like, again, I focus on film, so it's not necessarily box score right. uh, that, I'm, that I'm watching. But um, you're seeing offensive lines really, really focus on him. So he's seeing a lot of double and triple teams very often. And, uh, you know, when you see that kind of respect that, um, you know, he's, you know, drawing in the National Football League uh, from opposing offensive lines from the game plan, you know, it seems like he's being circled that week and they're, and they're making sure that he he's doesn't become a game wrecker. Um, so, you know, when you got, um, you know, some more, maybe, you know, Max Crosby, you know, continues to make us yeah. uh, take a step forward. Uh, if Maurice Hurst is on the field at the same time as him, um, you know, maybe hopefully they won't be able to double him as much. Um, and if he, if he sing, sees more, uh, you know, uh, one-on-one, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be nasty for uh, opposing offenses. That's, that's what I'm betting at least. <laughs> So with, with Malik Collins, right? Because he was on a, on, on a defensive line that had, was it Robert Quinn and, and uh, Demarcus Lawrence. So for him to be getting that kind of attention with those guys alongside him, kind of a big deal, right? It, it does make a big difference for Cleland Farrell. Yeah, Max and Crosby. really that was, the, that was the thing. When I was watching um, – well, I started watching for, um, Dallas Cowboys film when Rod Marinelli came over. So I watched right. um, you got all of their all of their third and longs for like the last four years. I watched all of their third and longs on defense, and especially this last season when Robert Quinn was getting you know these sacks and he had a great year. Um, usually he was going one on one with the tackle, and they were slanting the protection towards Malik Collins. So he's he opens uh, up things. It's not necessarily the uh, production that he's specifically getting as an individual. He's opening up things for, uh, you know, other pass rushers to eat. Which doesn't show up in the box score, like you're right. saying. You'll never – you unless there's somebody showing you film or, you know, just isolated all 22 footage, you're, you're not going to know what the impact he has. So right. that's, that's good. So Malik Collins, Corey Littleton. What do you think of Prince of Mukamara? I know you had a threat. You had a threat a while back. <laughs> you were kind of like, hey, this guy's okay, but – yeah, yeah. There were a couple things you saw in his game. Right, that, right. That I, I didn't see anybody else talk about. I looked at his coverage grade from 2018. I was like, wow, that's awesome. We're only one year off from that. Like, yeah. I mean, and a lot of that had to do with uh, the fact that he's playing on a fantastic uh, defense right. when he was playing with the Bears in 2018 where they were getting sacks and bunches, creating a lot of turnovers. Um, and really, your coverage is going to be a lot better when the quarterback has – doesn't have a lot of time to throw so when they're under duress you know that makes defensive backs lives a lot easier sure um you know i i, I watched prince mokumara i started you know watching like um draft prospects yeah, Nebraska. Uh, yeah. probably um probably like seven or eight years ago uh, so i've been following him ever since he was in college um i've never been a huge fan of prince mokumara yeah. to be honest with you you know i think he has played his best football in the last couple of years here uh, so that does definitely say a lot about him. Um, I thought it was just really interesting. And the reason why I made that thread about him was because he said that he was uh, one of, if not the best press man corners in the NFL. And, yeah. I, you know, I, okay, yeah. so, so I was like, okay, let's, let's look at this. Cause that didn't make really sense. That's why he lasts four weeks in a free agency. Yeah. That makes well, sense. Well, I mean, you're right. But uh, so I, so, I mean, I took a, I took a, uh, a look at it because I had watched uh, some Prince of Mukamara before, but you know, if it's not a Raiders player, I'm not going to, you yeah. know, to be, uh, you know, 
Uh, I'm not going to do a deep dive. Like you, you have time. Right. Yeah, you don't have time for that. Right. So, um, so, I, so I took a look at it, and definitely he made, he made his best plays in off coverage, for sure. Um, I, I think that uh, he, he does some good things in press coverage. I think he's patient. Uh, he, do, he doesn't panic. You know, he kind of, um, you know, lets the uh, receiver get into a stem before he, you know, um, ma- makes a move. And he, and he does use the press technique that Paul Gunther teaches, okay. which is called a, a press motor or a, a soft shoe technique where you're kind of gaining ground at the snap as opposed to a true press, which you're not gaining any ground. You're taking a flat step and you're trying to reroute the guy immediately. I see. Okay. So, there, uh, you know, there's two different That's camps. like bump and run, right? That's kind of – Right. Yeah, gotcha. Right. Um, but uh, but Paul Gunther kind of covets this, uh, this other type of press coverage. Uh, that, and for my money, it's – probably the hardest thing to do in sports honestly i think it's harder than hitting the baseball it's harder than hitting uh you know a three-point shot um wow. it, 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 playing press uh, uh playing press man and and motoring out and giving up ground and then you know being able to mirror and match with your feet first is uh is probably one of the most difficult things in all of sports it takes a very fantastic athlete to do so i did see some good things from prince mukamara i just didn't see the um the the ball production uh, attacking the hands, things that – little details after, you know, uh, right. when the ball's in the air that separate um, good corners from great corners. So uh, I, I thought it was interesting that he said that. I, I, I had a, a lot of examples of him getting beat in press man. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. You had I, I, I thought that was you pretty had funny. Receipts. But, uh, you know, for as far as Prince Mukamara goes, he is a good corner in the NFL. He's, a, you know, um, a proven veteran in the NFL. If uh, Damon Arnett's not ready, Prince Mukamara is right. going to be – I think, you know, he'll, he'll be com- maybe a little comparable to Daryl Worley um, as far uh, as. Uh, uh, all right. A guy who can run, but um, I, don't, I don't think that he's going to be a, a, a game changer, an impact player. I don't think that Principal Kumar will be. Interesting. So, I mean, to me, the way I saw it, just as a, again, I'm a casual fan that just gives opinions on things I see. I know a lot of where guys went to college, guys like that, guys I watched and stuff, but I, I don't have the eye that you do. So when I, when I look at something and I say, Prince of Mukamara, there's a name, right? That's a name. Nobody forgets that name, right? And so I'm like, okay, that guy's been doing well. He was on a winning team in Chicago. Um, last year, that whole team, something happened with them. So uh, kind of everybody took a step back, it seemed like. When I saw it, I was kind of like, okay, on a rate or curve, when you grade this on a curve, this is a good signing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, compared to what we've had, right? It, that, and he's supposed to be the third corner. I hope he's not the number two. The, well, when I don't say number two, right, because I don't think the Raiders travel their corners that much. You kind of have like a – do they travel a lot? Is that, is that something? No, because it's, like it's like a 1A, 1B type thing where it's like – it was, It's a left and right. You right, know, exactly. But you need yeah. – you don't have the, like, Deion Sanders, I'm following you all over the field guy. No. Yeah, yeah, so you kind of need a 1A and 1B – when you think about yeah. it, right? If you want to be a good defense. So uh, I was like, Prince isn't that guy, but I, I think if there's an injury to Arnett, I feel like it's not, the defense isn't on fire. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I, I really think that he's a, uh, he's an insurance policy. If okay. Damon Arnett's not ready to go, if, um, if Isaiah Johnson hasn't really, you know, taken that step in his development. I always forget. Uh, that. Th- then you, then you have a guy, you know, who has a lot of starting experience in the NFL uh, who will be able to come in and, um, you know, it, it, at least do his job and as long as the uh, the pass rush is getting there uh he's pretty darn good corner but if, yeah. if the pass rush isn't getting there um you know i i just don't think that he'll be much of an upgrade over there right. more of the same right you know yeah i yeah. see what you're saying that's okay so that's that's interesting um what did you think of the arnett pick at the time you know at the time i i had um as a fan, tell me as a fan first. What as, you thought? As, so as, yeah, as a fan, as a fan at the at the time, I liked uh, Trayvon Diggs. I'm pretty sure that's his that's his name. Yeah, Alabama. Uh, yeah. Out of out of Alabama, um, more than Damon Arnett. So I was a little disappointed because I thought that Trayvon yeah, he went to Diggs, Dallas, right? Like, later. yeah, he, he went yeah. to Dallas in like the second round. But um, so I was I was a little disappointed in that. Um, but you know w- when I did, what what's interesting is, uh, so I watch all these guys for like the last like all of them. I watch like. 200 plus prospects for the last like four years okay um what i thought was interesting though about the damon arnett pick first of all we're let, let's just go back to we're talking about that um press man technique that paul gunther likes mm-hmm. not many colleges actually use that and coach that 
So yeah, it's, you see guys playing like way off the ball in college. They're they're either playing way off the ball and like what a half turn and like a cover four type of defense, mm-hmm. which doesn't always translate to the NFL, uh, especially like the depths and the um at, at the depth at which like the patterns are kind of passed off to each other. It, there's a big difference from cover four in college to cover four in the NFL. Right. But um, you know, they're playing like in a half turn. Um, they're playing in a lot of different defenses. It, or if they are playing press, they're playing that true press where they're getting their hands on immediately. So there's really only a handful of college defenses that run a similar scheme to what an NFL would run, at least in the techniques that they're asking these guys to, to use. Right. Ohio State is one of them. Clemson is one of them. Uh, obviously, Alabama is, is sense, up there. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably Georgia um, is up there and uh, LSU and maybe like Utah. But other than that, after you get out of those teams – um, you're not, you're not going to really see NFL style techniques being taught. So I think that as, as long as the Raiders are picking, um, cor- corners, you know, uh, hopefully they don't have to pick a corner in the first round for a while now, I but know. they're going to pick, yeah. they're going to pick guys early from, from those schools, uh, just because they play the technique that Paul Gunther likes. So you think that's why they like Clemson so much? Yes. Okay. I thought yeah, it was just like, I reasons. thought it was, I thought it was just like, I remember seeing Mayock at the, um, must have been what 2018 2019 national championship game with clemson alabama it was actually down the street from my house uh, uh okay, cool, stadium cool. Yeah, yeah so yeah like well, i remember seeing him and i was like did he just fall in love with that school at that game or is it really it's got to be deeper than that obviously right right i mean ob- obviously all these big programs like like they keep on saying and, and i take them at face value for this they want um players from programs with uh you know being able to prove that they are winners from championship style programs and they want those guys to change the culture comes in obviously has had a lot of success so you know that uh you know that uh that that makes sense there from that standpoint right uh but then the other, like the other thing if we're talking about corners um specifically corners they run the, a similar style of press man that paul gunther teaches so w- when you kind of put those things together ohio state's in the same boat there um it it takes it it makes it easier learning curve when you get a guy you want him to play early he already knows the technique right and then he just has to go out there and play that makes sense no it makes a lot of sense so speaking of clemson um i'm gonna have you take the reins here for a second um we have a second year corner that i would say consensus opinion around raider nation and raider nation's volatile if you've seen twitter uh raider nation hates certain players loves certain players um Trayvon Mullen, I think everybody's like, yeah, we like him. Right. So, so um, you like him. I like him. Uh, I've talked to everybody else. I think he's got huge potential, um, at, least, at least within the system. I think, I think he's the perfect fit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you show me what you like about Trayvon Mullen or, or, or anything. And um, let me just go ahead and make you the host so you can, you can show me some stuff here. Uh, so the – it's all yours here. So yeah, just, just tell me what, what you expect from Trayvon in the second year. And I know you have some examples for me. Boom. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, ex- excuse this bar here. I wasn't able to format it. Correctly. That's all right. Yeah, you got my plug rare stuff. candy. Love it. Beautiful. <laughs> take it. I'll take it every time. So yeah. Um, Tra- wow. Trayvon, he, he, I think he surprised a lot of Raiders fans. Cause you know, he was a second round pick. Um, but you know this is oh, this that guy. play, yeah. Oh. That that was, that was a fun play. Uh, but th- yeah, this is a guy again. Great press corner. Paul Gunther likes his guys to play press man coverage, right? Um, so there was no question about that coming in. Um, when I watched him on tape um, before during the 2018 season, oh. um, the questions that I had about him were more about him playing off and in a back pedal, right? Oh. Um, so. Some, some things he, he answered some of these questions. Some things he didn't really answer these questions. So first we're going to look at uh, press man coverage. Here he is. He's in uh, press man against Tyreek Hill here. And what I really like about it is he finds the hands, right? He ah, finds yeah. the hands at, at the end of the play. Let, let's, let's, let's rewind this. Go ahead. Yeah, he, perfect. He takes, he takes a little bit of a false step here, uh-huh. which is something that, that towards the end of the year, like by, by week 17, I think he had kind of erased that from his game. And so you see him here. He takes this step forward. So when you say a false, I'm sorry. When you say a false step, is that just something that where it doesn't help you at all? You're just doing it like, is that, is that what I'm thinking? Like it's something well, where it doesn't the, matter. You're, you're doing it and it's slowing you down. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's an extra step that's not necessary. And 
you can talk about that in sprinting. You can talk about that if you're playing offensive or, tackle. Or a tackle, right? Colton Miller. Yeah. Colton Miller always a lot had a guys, that was his right. thing. Yeah. Right. Um, and so really in the technique that he's using, he needs to gain ground going backwards first. And so him taking a fall, uh, this first step forward um, is kind of a little bit of a false step. And like I said, he, he erased this from his game by week 17. And is he cheating uh, on like a, like a bubble screen or something here? Is he, is he trying to – I think that he does this so that he can get, um, get more of his heel in the ground uh, so he could press and go backwards. I'm pretty that's sure that's the reason why he does this. Right, right, right. Kind of get his foundation set so he can kind of right, go. Gotcha. Right, Yeah, but best case scenario, you, you're already kind of on your heels and ready to go backwards um, without having to take a step forward. And so he takes this little false step right here, and it's he's in a bad situation here because Tyreek Hill, he, you know he's fast as hell, right? Yeah, it's a bad um, situation. <laughs> he releases outside, outside – um, on the other side of this false step here, okay? So we kind of see Trayvon Mullen stumble to mirror and get his hands on Tyreek Hill here, uh -huh. okay? So he's not in a great position, but what he makes up for is that he finds the hands oh. at the catch point and is able to break up that pass, even though the technique wasn't perfect, okay? Uh, another example here. Um, you're showing me heartbreaking games, by the way. I, I know. <laughs> Another example here. He's in. This is one of my favorite plays that Trayvon Mullen um, had. This is Jacksonville, it, the last yeah. game in Oakland. Jacksonville. He takes this lateral step, and again, we see him finding the hands, right? Mm -hmm. So his his technique has improved here. We're not seeing a false step. This is cover zero, so it's not true press, but it is a. Flat but you got out. nothing behind you. Yeah, you got yeah, nothing. Yeah. So it is a it is a man to man coverage, and you do have to be aggressive. Um, and but we see him uh, mirror immediately mirror the release of the receiver. So he takes that lateral step, and once he sees that the receiver rolls his hips through and really commits to this route, he turns it on, finds the hands, again, so things that we find that pop up over and over again in Trayvon Mullen's film um, is him doing the little things at the end of the play, finding the hands disrupting passes um th those are the things that separate a good corner from a great corner oh sure he does he does this with regularity uh another game this is a fun one right here let me move this maybe we'll just do that there you go um he mike williams Chad, yeah. he, he he's in he's in a press technique here that and but they're playing cover two man on top of him so he can open up the gate so to speak meaning he could turn his hips and deny an inside release because he knows that if Mike Williams gets on top of him, he has safety help over the top here. So he doesn't have to worry about staying on top and staying square here. Uh, it's the only, really the only time when you're in press man that you can open up like that is when you're in cover two, uh, or two man. So right. that's what's happening here. He opens up immediately. And even though he opens up to the inside, he still gets beat inside. Again, off balance, not in a great position here, but he has uh, that recovery speed. And then the wherewithal to find the hand at the end of the play. So even though now in, in the pre, in press man, the technique might not be perfect. He does these little things right. So once he perfects this technique, we can see him, um, you know, continuing to develop, becoming one of the better press man corners in the NFL, in my opinion. Um, now uh, off coverage is a different story. So when we were talking about press man, I could count maybe like, four or five examples of when Trayvon Mullen gave up a catch and press man. Now, some teams did this to him where – I'm sorry. Give me one second. I, just because I have people that listen on audio only. Um, we are on YouTube. You're going to want to watch this episode on YouTube. Um, that's just, that's just the way it is. Uh, so if you're listening to rock Vegas on iTunes and Spotify, you're going to want to subscribe to the rare candy YouTube page because we are showing actual – film of Trayvon Mullen right now uh so go watch sorry, it go watch it before the NFL takes it down okay get it get in there while it's hot, well, yeah right? you put that up. yeah yeah <laughs> this, this, episode, this episode's getting taken down you're absolutely right but yeah no, I, I, absolutely I'll put not I'll put no film in the title that's what I'll put no, yeah, no film. No, don't, don't, don't even look, look here NFL don't right. even look there's no <laughs> film so uh yeah go on I'm sorry go ahead so, so what you're seeing here is that the wide receiver he starts off and he's an impressed uh technique Okay, and we're in man coverage here against Tennessee. He's in a press technique, okay? Um, but what Tennessee did a lot of to get these uh, – get some space for their receivers is they would short motion and put their guys here, okay, on an inside alignment. And the reason why they did that, 
okay, is because they know the Raiders are playing man coverage and Trayvon Mullen is going to have to get back now because you can't have two guys I see. at the same level playing man coverage when the split is this tight because then a, natu- a natural rub will yeah. just happen. These guys are going to pick each other off. Here, Easy okay? money. Patriots, so, like all, all those teams that just do that. This, this, feast a, on this, it. this is a very standard thing. If you're a man and you get a tight, uh, a reduced split, you got to back up as a corner. Okay, so now we, we see Trayvon Mullen. He had to back up because of this, um, because of this little wrinkle that Tennessee added. Okay, um, and so now now we see him. He's doing a good job here, as far as when he gets this inside release from the receiver, he's taking what's called a leverage step to maintain his position on his outside shoulder. Okay, uh-huh. so that's that that's a good job. All right, what's well, so not a leaving, good job? He's leaving room. He's leaving room. So in case there's an out that happens there, he's able to react right. to that. And, I gotcha. and, the, and the Raiders right now are on cover one, um, man free. So basically you have help in the middle of the field. You don't ha- have help outside. So you need to st- maintain your uh, re- leverage and stay right. on the outside shoulder. Right. Um, so we, like we, like I said, we see him leverage step when we get an inside release. So he stays on the outside shoulder. So that's a good thing. But what's bad here and what breaks down is he's opening up. Okay, when yeah. he has so much cushion here. So he, this is like uh, almost four yards of cushion, and he's already opening up. Okay, so this is, this is the worst thing that he could do right now. Okay. He's leaving the outside and, wide open, right? Well, outside or inside, it's really hard um, yeah. to, to transition. Right. Um, I see what you're saying. From either direction when you're in that position here, okay? So he's in a, he's in a bad, bad spot here. He, the, only, the only way he'd be in a good spot – is if this guy, I think this is Corey Davis, Corey Davis, uh, yeah. continue continues to run vertical. Yeah, but if it goes inside or outside, it's tough to, when you're in a half turn to plant and, and drive in either direction here. Okay, I see. So now what happens? Uh, he's in a bad spot. He has to wheel around. He gives up this catch for a first down. Okay, so the technique isn't quite consistent like it was, um, like it was when he's in press. Okay. Okay. Same thing here, same exact kind of thing. This is Tim Patrick. He's a Denver Broncos wide receiver. We, ha- we have him backed up now because he can't stay and play press man at the same level as, as the safety who has the man on the tight end, okay? So what happens is he, he doesn't quite leverage all the way, and then he's opening up almost as if he's in cover three, okay? Um, maybe he is in cover three, but at the end of the day, he's got to be on this outside shoulder here. And Tim Patrick is way inside the hash and he's just crossing the hash. So he has no chance. He has no chance. If this breaks across the middle of the field, he has no chance. Of no. Yeah. Play. Easy money. Okay. Um, so again, the, the technique isn't great. And you see him, he's a little upset right now, probably because he uh, thought that um, linebackers would be there. Someone would be, we'd be helping. Well, to hear Whitehead was probably still like on the side. Like he was out of the frame. He, he wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, sorry, hold on. So, uh, so, maybe a little frustrated about that, but at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta stay in your fundamentals. You have to stay square. Uh, and then this is the only touchdown he gave up. We know he's a man coverage. We see Nevin Lawson running around uh, shadowing the uh, receiver and he gives up this catch at the top of the screen uh, for a touchdown to AJ Brown. The only reason I added this and I don't really have a whole bunch of commentary about this. It's just that this play right here is the only, this is Trayvon Mullen here at the top of the screen. Yeah. This is the only touchdown he gave up since he became a starter. This is the only one. It's not and bad. And it's an off man, right? Uh, so, like I said, the amount of times that he was targeted and he gave up a catch and off man, there's a stark difference between that and when he was impressed, man. I see. Um, now, there's two more examples that I just want to show that I think that he could be. He could continue to develop and be a good off man corner because um, he has some really good things in his game. This is against Tyree Kill again, okay? Again, what happened? They reduced the split so that Trayvon Mullen could get back, right? I see. Uh, so he, he has to be back here, all right? Now, what he does that's fantastic in this is that he times his break perfectly. And the next clip, I'm going to slow it down. I love that play. I, I, remember, okay. I remember being so hyped for this play. So the reason why I'm circling their feet here is because as soon as Tyree Kill breaks towards the out, Trayvon Mullen puts his foot in the ground at the same exact time, okay? Mirroring, yeah. Nine times out of ten, when you see a guy make a play like this, they are able to time their break at the same exact time as the receiver, okay? So Is that why he's of, so good at jumping routes? 
Well, he, and, and again, this is the only reason I'm bringing this up. This isn't, this isn't, it, this is not a one-off. This is something that he has shown throughout the course of being a starter in his film, that he has the ability to do this, to time his break, uh, sync his break up exactly with the receiver's uh, plant foot. Okay. So we see this here. This is one of the better wide receivers, top five wide receiver in the NFL. Right? Oh yeah. He's a nightmare. Um, um and we had a earlier clip where he was impressed man he disrupted a pass and now he's an off man against the same same receiver and again he's disrupting the catch here okay so a lot of that is film study a lot of that, that was third down study. i think that was third down too wasn't that was it the third down stop that God. was the third down yeah, stop yeah what a beast so some of that is film study some of that is um calculated guesswork right right uh, but at the end of the day the the best corners in the NFL, they do this consistently. I think that Trayvon Mullen can continue to develop and show that he can consistently do this in the NFL. Um, the next clip I have, he's an off man and he's pedaling. And he's able to kind of disrupt the timing of this route here against Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay is a really good receiver. Oh, yeah. If we slow this down, watch that exaggerated. Look, look how exaggerated this is. His head yeah. is like all the way down. Okay. Look about to fall, yeah. He, so he has really disrupted the timing of this route. Matt Stafford, Kenny Galladay, they got a great Is that a penalty? penalty? Is that a penalty? Could you call that? So the thing – now the thing is here, this is really savvy, okay, and I'm going to talk about it next, okay? So he's, he's put that arm bar there. He's really slowed down. And then just watch his hand. Watch his hand, okay? He tugs the jersey. Yeah, and, and catches up a little bit, and now he lets go. That's okay. old school Raider bump and Very run, baby. Let's go. Savvy. You know, Matt Stafford and Kenny Galladay have completed this pass to oh, yeah. all the time, but he does just enough there to disrupt the timing of that route, and the, that's the reason why it ended up being a um, an incompletion. So he shows some things in off coverage where if he continues to develop in in his game, there he fights to stay square. Uh, he can take another step in that direction. He obviously has some things to clean up and press man as well. But I'm liking the trajectory, and there's the little things that he does good. Uh, so I, I'm fully confident that he will, you know, continue development and eat, take another step forward um, uh, as an NFL corner. Best Raiders corner since? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say. 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 Ah, okay. That was what I guess. We'll that was what I guess. If, if if he has a, a similar year um, in press man uh, as he did last year, and he You're... continues to kind of clean up these things in off man, yeah, he he should be the best corner since Mount Deep. Uh, but he's yeah. got to take another step forward. I mean, honestly, like there's not much to you know put against him at that point. I know that's but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. So, um, so year year two for Trayvon. Do you ex you had a thread where you were saying you and I I saw you get a not a little flack, but Raider Nation only likes positivity. So, um, when you said he you expect defenses to try double moves on him in year two, what do you right. think? Yeah, um, and, and that it makes example, sense. It makes sense. He cheats on he he'll he like with that step you said with Tyreek Hill, where he's mirroring right. that step. If he mirrors that step, but Tyreek hits a double move, he's done. Right, right. And so it's really going to be the onus is going to be on him to understand the situation that he's in, do a lot of film study, um, and take these calculated guesses. Uh, continue to play, you know, aggressive and not you know think too much. But yeah, they're definitely gonna they're gonna definitely gonna try him with double moves. Yeah. But you see, they they had to adjust him as the year went on, and redu like every single team that he played from like week uh, thirteen on, week twelve on, they started reducing their splits so that they could get Trayvon Mullen off him because he's so good in press. So they were already adjusting to him to his play style. It's good so, to see. You know, that's gonna continue to happen, um, and that's just the way the NFL is. Teams are always gonna try to find that next edge. Um, so he's got to continue to develop. And I fully ex expect him to see a lot of double moves because that play against Tyreek Hill, there's like three or four other plays that he made just like that. Um, also, we got to see him catch some of these balls, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, in that Texans game, man, just – and I yeah. remember the Bengals. They ended up winning. So, I was at that Bengals game. He had that one where he jumped that route. I was like, dude, you would have walked in right. if, if, that, if that was the case, which is nice. I like the guy that could jump the route. That's fine. You know what I mean? I'll take that over any day of the week. Even if you don't catch it, hey, whatever. But that was, you know – Maybe a win or a loss in that in Texans if he catches that ball. You don't know. And um, so we expect 
bigger things. We, I don't know if we expect a sophomore slump. I don't, I don't, do you? No. And the reason why I don't expect it is because something that I'm really impressed about impressed with Mike Mayock and John Gruden, their, their brain trust is they're getting guys who really, really love football. And I know junkies, it sounds, yeah, junkies. sounds cliched at this point, everyone's saying it. Um, but there's a lot of distractions that come from, obviously I, I, I didn't, I never played uh, professional football. I only played college football, but I know that the distractions that I got uh, from high school to college. Right. And I can only imagine yeah. um, just with all the money that you have to spend when you're an athlete. Um, and and it's like, you've made it. You like, I've yeah. made it. I'm playing professional football. Now yeah. I have to be like, to be good at it is another thing, but like I've made it. Right. And, and we saw job. other corners, even in, um, even in Trayvon Mullen's class, you know, uh, DeAndre Baker who went to the Giants. Get no, he's, up he's, up to, he's got some things going on, right. not football related, but yeah. yeah right. Definitely. So, so it's like, um, <laughs> Holy shit. That, that's, that's the reason why someone would have a sophomore slump is because they kind of rested on their laurels. They thought, Hey, uh, I had a great year. So, you know, maybe I could take this one easy, but, um, I, I, I don't, I don't think that that's in Trayvon Mullen's character. I think he's a super fiery. Yeah. Super guy, Cause you so saw, I, you saw him like, and look, I don't want to bring this guy up, but even like, I remember being excited about Antonio Brown and you'd see those clips of Antonio Brown and him going like one-on-one. And it was like, this guy likes to play ball. You know what I mean? Like he'd be running downfield with AB and they would just be, it wouldn't even be a team practice. It would just be them working out together and stuff. Right. And I was like, this guy just wants to play ball. And I love right. that. You know? Right. So it's it's uh we used to draft guys that almost died on the football field and then uh you know what i mean go play go play corner and and it was like you know dj hayden you know what i mean like like guys like that and it just it was like yeah you wanted the heart but you also want technique to come with it you know what i mean and stuff and and it feels like trayvon mullen has both right yeah. and and uh so another another one um another one that i'm talking about is, is the 12th overall pick first year player so we don't know we really don't know yet is, uh, is Henry Rux, 12th overall pick. Let me tell you back where I was with the 12th overall pick. I was kind of like, Ugh, why, is, why wasn't it Judy or Lamb? Like, why, it was the easier pick to pick either of those two guys. Why did we pick the deep threat that you have to scheme? You know, you, ha- you really have to it, – it's up to your coach and your quarterback to maximize his value. I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know. And so, so Henry Rux, now I'm all in. I love the guy. I love it. I love the way he speaks about football. He seems like the guy out of those three guys who likes football more than all three of those guys, even though he yeah. wasn't the number one at Alabama. He just seems like an alpha. He seems like, uh, he just seems like a dog. You know what I mean? Like they're already putting clips of him making one handed catches. Just like his vertical is insane. Hands are insane. Um, do you, what do you, what are you expecting from him? Well, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to be, He's going to be the focal point of the passing attack. I'm fully confident that really? Gruden is going to make sure he gets 90 plus um, catches, you know, or like uh, you targets, know, maybe 100, targets. 100 plus yeah. targets, you know. So we'll yeah. see where, where, his, where his catches end up going. Um, but yeah, uh, he's going to definitely be the focal point of the passing attack. And the reason for that is John Gruden doesn't call a lot of deep passes, first right. of all. He does a lot of, of short game, intermediate game, and crossing routes. And when you have a guy with the speed of Henry Ruggs getting, running a crossing route against man coverage, that means it turns into a race. Yeah. Who's, like, who's going to catch him, right? So uh, I fully expect him to see, uh, to see him um, being used on a lot of short to intermediate area across the field kind of stuff. And from his film, you're going you're gonna to see a guy, if you just throw on Henry Ruggs, Oh, okay, you're going to see a guy not only who's doing great things with the ball in his hands, but when the ball isn't in his hands, he's trying to decleat safeties and corners when his teammates have the ball. He's an incredible teammate, right? So let's go back to when they drafted Cleveland Furl. They, they could have picked Josh Allen. They could have picked uh, Montez Sweat. They could have picked Rashawn Gary. Yeah, yeah, they, they had, they had all, basically all the guys after Nick Bosa that they could have picked. And I remember before the draft process, they had them all in for, they had every single one of those guys in the building and they learned about who they were as a, as a person. Okay. And so they went with Cleveland Furl, Right. And I know that his rookie season wasn't what Raiders fans thought, you know, for a fourth overall pick or whatever. Okay. But they could have picked anyone and they picked Cleveland Furl because they believed in who he was as a person. Okay. So the Raiders are going to do this as a, to a fault. All right. So you got uh, Jerry point. Judy. 
you got uh, C.D. Lamb. These guys were maybe a little bit more productive than Henry Ruggs were, was. But the reason why they picked Henry Ruggs, not just because he's a phenomenal athlete, but they picked him because they loved who he was as a man, all right, as a competitor. That's the reason why they picked this guy. So the Raiders, get used to this Raider, Raider Nation. If you were thinking, hey, they should have picked Judy, uh, they should pick uh, C.D. Lamb, they're going to pick guys who – freaking love football like that's who they're gonna pick they're not gonna pick anyone if they have any smidgen of doubt that this guy is all in 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 the game of football then they're not gonna pick him regardless of what they look like um you know in college so get used to that Raider Nation yeah and and that's probably the way to go um even right now like you're and and I'm not trying to put health over anything but like even right now look at all the opt-outs like the lack of opt-outs these guys like want to play ball they're just like ah they're young they're young they're healthy they're in shape they're just like I want to play ball yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you're 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 looking at that, and that's what that's what sold me on rugs, and also what sold me on rugs was like, kind of the and I I listen to PFF. I do I do like PFF. I take it at it with a grain of salt a lot of it, but what they were saying was Henry Ruggs is so intriguing because it's not even so much of when he's targeted on the play. It's it's just the his presence on the field. What does that mean? You know, like what does that mean for Darren Waller? What does that mean for Hunter Renfro? Yeah. What does that mean for Brian Edwards, right? So to be able to – the defense, even though John Gruden doesn't call a lot of deep threats or deep uh, deep passing plays, you're still, as a corner, you can't cheat. You know what I mean? You don't want to make the have it be the one time where he just blows past you and bye-bye. You know what I mean? There's there's six. You don't want it to be that case. So they can't you're – getting, You're getting ahead of me because we're going to talk about that soon. Ah, I mean, man. <laughs> so, so when Ruggs is on the field – you have to account for him as a defense. He's not able to go deep. And uh, you were going to, you were basically going to show some examples of Ruggs' presence on the field and what it does for this offense. Because Greg Olson was saying, Hey, he might start in the slot. And that really scared a lot of Raider nation. Cause they're like, Hey, Renfro was so awesome last year. I don't want to lose Renfro. I don't think we're used to as Raider fans. We're used to having like wide receiver depth and what that's <laughs> like to be like, Hey, um, yeah. there might be a, might be a time where we could have four wide receivers that are all good on the field. You know what I mean? Like we don't, we're not used to that in my lifetime. I've barely seen it, you know? Mm. So, um, so go, go on, go on uh, with what you were going to say. Okay. So, um, yeah, let me find it. Here it is. So yeah, when you came to me, um, you said you wanted me to talk about Henry Ruggs. In the I did. I did. Guilty as charged. Um, now let's preface this conversation. First of all, in John Gruden's offense, everyone has to learn every position. So Henry Ruggs playing in the slot is really not that big of a story, okay? It's not that big of a deal, okay? Oh, but, I love this play. But let's just talk about what it would look like if Henry Ruggs were, were, was in the slot, okay? So just for some context with this situation, this is the Tennessee game. Hunter Renfro is injured. And without Hunter Renfro in the slot, the Raiders really didn't have much of a plan. OK, uh, the players that they put in the slot in, in his absence didn't have a lot of great success. This is one play, though, where that play, uh, where the guy in the slot had had success. This is Rico Gafford. Rico Gafford is the only guy who has maybe similar uh, speed to what Henry Ruggs brings. And we're going to go ahead and see what happens when you have that kind of speed in the slot. Right. Um, plays like this happen where you have a, a, a big touchdown. OK. Now, I posted this, and some people were like, okay, yeah, that's a broken coverage, all right? But the reason why this is a broken coverage, first of all, is because what defenses were seeing on film was not a lot of speed, especially in the slot receiver position. Even Hunter Renfro, okay, he's not a, he's not a guy who's walking away from defenses for the most part, okay? So you see two guys here thinking about the situation and keying and looking for underneath routes because they're so used to that happening. Right. And now it comes back and bites them in the butt because they have a guy who actually has a lot of speed in the slot, all right? And so that's what, that's what this could turn into, all right? Um, here's another example that went the opposite way, just like this, okay? Everyone knows this play. This play sucks, right? Oh, God, I'm already triggered. Um, I want you to pay attention to safety. This is one Thornhill here, okay? Yeah. He jumps this route, oh. and he takes it to the house. Now, just think about this. If Henry Ruggs is in the slot, do you think that – how many safeties do you think are going to be sitting here flat-footed? Cheating. Yeah, just flat-out cheating. And, and, and jumping things in front of them 
when they know that they could get blasted over the top. This is Keelan Dawson in the in the slot here. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about like a four a four six seven runner. Right. You know I mean? So yeah. so his this safety knows. Hey, my guy can run with this guy. My guy has a cushion on this guy. Uh, my guy's gonna run with that guy. I'm not worried about anyone getting beat deep here. I can take a, a calculated risk here and go ahead and jump in front of something. Bam. Okay. But I I truly believe that if Henry, Henry Ruggs is on the field, regardless of where he is, that that's not gonna be happening. Okay. Now, week 17, Hunter Renfro's back. He's healthy again. So he's in the slot. He's running this over route, okay? This is what it, this is called, okay? John Gruden, this is a huge part of the Raiders passing game and what we were talking about earlier with crossing routes, okay? So a lot of times what you'll see here is that this will be paired with a play action to suck these linebackers up if it's a zone play, okay? And then they're going to run this over route behind them, okay? So this is, this is uh, Hunter Renfro on the slot here, okay? So, again, if Henry Ruggs is in the slot, this is the kind of looks that he's going to be getting. These are true NFL looks here, okay? Mm-hmm. And Hunter, if Hunter Renfro could do it, you think Henry Ruggs can do it, okay? I, I would think. I, yeah, I'd have to check. I, I'm pretty sure Henry Ruggs is faster, yeah. So, this is really the only clip that I have of Henry Ruggs here because he played the majority of his time at Alabama outside. But here's an example against LSU, the national champions, where he's running the same exact route with the same exact kind of play action look, okay? And he's running this over route from the slot, okay? And so now what we see when you have a guy who can cover so much grass being able to kind of eat up these spaces that are opened up in the defense, and that's where John Gruden likes to run his slot players, okay, on these over routes behind play action, all right? So, again, if Hunter, if Hunter Ruggs is in the slot, this is not something to worry about if you're, if you're a Raiders fan, okay? Um, this next example I'm showing you here, this is a huge, huge part of the Raiders' vertical passing game. Even though they don't run a ton of vertical concepts, this is one of their most called vertical concepts, and this is called the dagger, okay? Uh-huh. So dagger means you have an inside receiver, the slot receiver, running a clear out, seam route, and he's really not the target on this play. What's happening here is this, this clear out route needs to open up space and get this, this safety, whoever this overhang player is, to vacate the, air, the area in the field where this dig is going to come and follow, okay? So we'll, we'll watch this. This is, I think, Trevor Davis, who's in the slot here, and he runs this route. And I'm just going to pause this, okay? So Tyrell Williams is on the outside, and he's uh... already breaking – and rolling his hips through and trying to come, and Trevor Davis has not even cleared the depth that Tyrell Williams is at, okay? I see. If you're a coach, if you're an offense coordinator, you want this guy to already be, to yeah, yeah. Be closer, you know, uh, to pass Tyrell Williams at this point, especially because he's throttling down here, all right? And Trevor Davis, he's a fast guy, but not there's not going to really be many guys who have that kind of speed that um, Henry that Ruggs is going to have, okay? So – even though this does result in a catch and, it, and it's a great run ex- executed play here, okay? Um, if you just watch and just pay attention here, uh, let me run it back. Look at this safety. He's really not threatened vertical at all. No. This all right? And now he's in a position when the ball gets here to potentially make a play. All right? If you have Henry Ruggs running this clear out, okay, this safety is going to be bailing. He's going to be so far back because he's going to be worried about getting beat deep. And so this opens up, like you were saying, things for other players to eat because safeties aren't going to be able to jump on things. All right. Um, the next thing, I think this is the last one I have here. When you're in the slot in majority of offenses, this is not just the Jordan Gruden offense thing. Okay. You have a lot of trickery being able to come to you. So you see the slot player here, he takes a reverse. All right. Trevor Davis, he's a return man. He makes something out of nothing here. But fully expect if, – if, if, if they're saying Henry Ruggs is playing in the slot, that means because they want to get him on reverses, jet sweeps, bubble screens, stuff to get the ball in his hands and let him be a playmaker and take advantage of that speed, okay? He has a better chance of doing that when he's in the slot than he really does on the outside. So that's – right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, and so what – I mean, to me, Sorry. that's the, the reason you – sorry, the reason you draft – 
Henry Ruggs, it's not to use him as a traditional like receiver. You you want to get the ball in his hands. You want to you want to you want to hand directly hand it to him. That's one of the you know safest ways to get it into his hands. So you you're, you're right. saying all these trades that they might have made for a Trevor Davis, right? You know, guys like that where they traded cuz I, I think John Gruden was missing that from his offense. He right. was trading for random return guys, cast offs from other teams and um, no disrespect to Trevor Davis, but uh you know he's not Henry Ruggs. So we don't think he is. You know what I mean? Henry hasn't played a snap of NFL football, but you like to think like you're saying, if he's running these routes, what does that create for the Brian Edwards, right? The right. T- Tyrell Williams, the Darren Wallers, right? right. And, and all the route combinations you can do between the two. Uh, it, it's exciting. This is what sold me on Henry Ruggs after being kind of, honestly, a little bit kind of disappointed w- when they drafted him at first, but I, I see it now. Yeah. And the, um, it's really the explosive element that he has to the offense and all the different ways that you're going to take capitalize on that. Um, isn't going to be, Hey, we're going to use this guy and exclusively run him on the outside on go routes. You're not going to take advantage of all, all of his explosive playmaking abilities. If that's all you want him to do. Um, if, if you're having Henry Ruggs being able to move around and play multiple positions now on a week to week basis, you go, Hey, we're going to have you on the slot this week. Um, because we think we could take advantage of a mismatch. Um, so it's, again, it's a non-story because John Gruden likes all of his play, all of his wide receivers to learn every position. He's been on record saying that. The film backs that up. He doesn't just oh. have guys in one spot at one time, okay? But at the same time, if, if you want Henry Ruggs getting the ball early, him being able to play wherever, including the slot, is better. Uh, so this is, this is the last clip I have here for you. Okay. This is Hunter Renfro. We like Hunter Renfro. We love Hunter Renfro, right? Raider nation. Okay. He's running a very simple slant route. Super simple. Okay. There's really nothing to this. And Derek Carr gets the ball out. And if Hunter Renfro is breaking angles. Okay. This is just a sneak peek at what is going to happen. Excuse me. This is just a sneak peek at what's going to happen, okay, when Henry, when Henry Ruggs gets, you know, a yeah. slammer because he has the explosive ability to take things to the house. So I fully expect him to have, um, you know, four or five huge plays off of very simple concepts. And maybe that's a slant route. Maybe that's a bubble screen. You know, maybe that's a jet a sweep, whatever it is. But he maximizes that playmaking ability if he's playing in the slot. God, I love this play so much though. I don't ever stop showing it. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> no, I, the, uh, what I, so another thing you had said, um, I saw that headline go out, right? Henry Ruggs to start in the slot and everybody's panicking. Oh man, buildings are on fire. And what you had said, and, and not to take away from Henry Ruggs for a second, but you had said, this might say more about Brian Edwards than Henry Ruggs. Right. And, um, I really think that, first of all, Brian Edwards is he's, he's really slept on like nationally. I think Raider Nation dog coming to um, you know get, gain some steam on understanding the kind of player he is. There is only three players in the SEC ever history who reached the totals that he did in the SEC. Okay, um, Amari Cooper and uh, Jordan Matthews. Or were the okay, only one, yeah. guys who had <laughs> yeah, the, the, the amount of yards and uh, touchdowns and, right. and everything like that that Brian Edwards had? Okay, now and he, he didn't have a quarterback either. With who? You're, exactly. I was just about to say that. Yeah, sorry. Who was, who was throwing to this guy? Right? Who was th- so he's able to get all this production, and when you watch him, he's like he is. He's such a dog. They are doing every single thing they can to get the ball in this guy's hands because they know he's such a playmaker. And there's a lot of things that he does good. And um, if, he, if he worked out at the combine, he was able to kind of show his stuff at the combine. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind he would have gone much sooner than when the Raiders picked him. Um, I kind of uh, – I would say I would like him, liken him to like an A.J. Brown who had a breakout year. He was a second-round uh, wide receiver uh, for Tennessee last that. year. Where he's a big-bodied guy. He has um, uh, good route-running ability. Um, and, and he's got a lot of juice. So I think that the, the Raiders kind of hit a, hit a little bit of a jackpot with Brian Edwards. Um, and if he's ready to go when the season starts, he, the pedigree that he comes from playing in the SEC, being a big, big, big-time player, um, having his best games against his, the, the hardest opponents, 
um, he should take over for Tyrell Williams sooner rather than later, for sure. Man, so what what does Tyrell Williams got to do to keep his job? That's what I'm wondering about all this. <laughs> like, like, cause I I like Tyrell Williams. Like, I I thought as a fan, just a casual fan, not a film guy or anything. I was kind of like, I don't know, this guy him him and Carr seemed like they had a little something going. He was he was able yeah. to get in the end zone, able to score touchdowns. He's chopped liver to a lot of people. Well, the, the thing about Tyrell Williams is he's at his best if he's a complimentary piece sure. in a wide receiver core. You're supposed to be he's the not, AB. Right. He's not um, – I don't think that he – the way that he plays is really off the dog mentality. You know, you want a guy who, can, who is that fast and can um, – who, yeah. who's that big and, and that fast to really have that kind of like, if the ball is in the air, I'm going to take it. And – Unfortunately, Tyrell Williams wasn't a guy who won outside very much last mm-hmm. year. He won across the middle being schemed open. So there's a lot of things like that dagger um, concept that I just showed you, where basically the whole point of the play is that someone is opening up that space for him uh, to create to create that uh, catch radius so, right. he can, so he can make a play. But when it came down to the times where we really, really needed Tyrell Williams to just beat someone straight up, man-to-man, he lost those reps more often than he won them. And I think that Brian Edwards is a guy where if, if, if his film from college is any indication, um, I think there's a better chance of him, you know, being able to win those reps on the outside against man-to-man coverage, you know, the, the fade balls, uh, the jump balls, things like that. I think there's a better chance that he can win those um, than Tyra Williams. Okay. So, now the reason I the reason I'm high on Tyrell Williams this year and look, look maybe maybe the contract might not might not be validated by his production I'm I'm not gonna sit here and say that he's gonna live up to the contract that he has the reason I like him for this year is the same reason I like Derek Carr for this year I'm not a huge Derek Carr believer I, I still think this offense could go to another level with a quarterback that could improvise extend the play um, every offense good. Exactly. So I, I still think you shouldn't settle for average when you can be great. Um, and, and so the reason I like Tyrell Williams is because of this off season. He already knows the offense already knows his quarterback had, I mean, he had, what did he have eight touchdowns last year? Like he got in the end zone last year. It wasn't the problem. He had plantar fasciitis. That sucks. Like I I've had, you know, foot injuries, but not, not like just aches and pains. And that sucks. You know what I mean? So when I, when I see Tyrell Williams, and look, I would love him to be the number three receiver on this team. If he's the number three receiver on this team, right. we're, we're winning. Yeah. Winning football games. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if that's what you're saying, I'm all in. I just don't want people to forget about him. <laughs> I, I, I'm, coming, I'm coming across really hard on Tyrell Williams. Actually, I do like Tyrell Williams. I just thought, um, you know, there was certain, certain games that were, were on the line, the Houston game being one of them. Yeah, he was not able to win outside the numbers against the guy we just traded. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> so it's like it, those things are kind of disappointing. And like you're saying, you know, why settle for average? Um, so I, I think that he's a solid wide receiver in the NFL. I don't think that he's a, he's a game changer. I think that he's again right. a three piece. That's fair. But if if these guys can really step up and show that they're even better than Tyrell Williams, like you said, we're in a great position because then Tyrell Williams and Nelson Aguilar are fourth and fifth wide receivers on this offense so okay. that's pretty good okay so i have two more questions for you two more and there one of them is going to catch you by surprise one of them is just trying to fit this guy in on this team so the first one i'm going to start with this what the hell do we do with lamarcus joiner <laughs> what happens i don't i don't get it you draft a meek robertson it's got to tell you something when you draft a meek robertson you got to say like look that slot regardless of what you say you can't tell me that when you draft Amik Robertson, who went way later than he should have, we all, I think everyone can agree that Amik Robertson, his height and maybe the school he played for, you know, pushed him back a little bit. LaMarcus Joyner was one of the worst slot corners in the league last year, production wise. That's uh, the film might say otherwise, but I don't, uh, I, I, I wasn't happy with what I saw. What, what do we do with him? Does he, um, I'm sorry, Jim O'Neill, the DB coach for the Raiders, was saying that. Joiner would get some looks at free safety and what they ask for in their scheme is that their free safety sometimes have to cover come down and cover you know what I mean like uh in the nickel and stuff like that so what what do we do how do we make this contract even slightly valuable 
Yeah. Oh, no, nah, you don't have to. You, if, if it's nothing, it's nothing. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Think, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, LaMarcus Joyner has incredible pedigree. Um, he's like an all American at Florida state. Um, he's a guy and it's a rare, it's a rare type of athlete really who can play nickel corner and safety in the NFL. There's really only a handful of guys who could do that. Obviously the best, the best uh, defensive backs, Ty, uh, Tyron Matthew, Devin McCourty, Malcolm Jenkins, maybe, you know, like three or four years ago were guys who played free safety on first down and then in nickel, they subbed the safety in and they would come down and, I see. Uh, yeah. and, and play man over the slot. Um, and I think that what we have in LaMarcus Joyner is like a diet version of that. Um, the funny thing about LaMarcus Joyner is I think he only gave up one or two touchdown passes. He gave up a lot of yards. Yeah. Um, the catch percentage that he uh, gave up was not great. It was like by far the, the worst uh, DB um, numbers I charted every single game for the Raiders uh, defenses last year so I kept my own proprietary um, stats on that but um, he gave up a, a really bad catch percentage but he really didn't give up many touchdowns I think it was only one or two if I'm remembering correctly I should have uh, reviewed those no that sounds I right that's how I don't remember him getting beaten in the, in the end zone very often right or like um, guys, guys getting it after him yeah 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 I mean that Jacksonville one was one of them um, that lost the game oh, that was bad but um, yeah, there's other things that lost the game yeah. but go on but uh, I, I don't want to make excuses for uh, Lamarcus Joyner, but playing nickel corner is incredibly difficult. Sure. It, it's more difficult than playing on the outside because when you're on the outside, you really only worry about the guy in front of you. And when you're playing nickel corner, you have to worry about how you're fitting into the run fits at the same time yeah. as you're playing man coverage well, there's more traffic coverage, right wouldn't it whatever. wouldn't it just be like yeah. more tra I mean, right. more moving there's, parts there's around you yeah. there your receivers have a two-way go on you um usually you know you're able to just use your leverage when you're on the outside so it, it is incredible like the level of difficulty of the position that he's playing is really tough um and then on you know on top of that it seems like a couple of things were working against him first of all the raiders had no linebackers so he was <laughs> well, being yeah. asked to come out there, and then they were saying, even though we're in nickel, we still need to stop the run. Okay, so you can see him often peeking into the backfield when guys are running past him, and then him getting beat on a on a passing play, because Paul Gunther is saying you are literally you're better than you know our third best linebacker, so you have to be able to play the run as well. Probably true. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, he can clean up his eyes a little bit being a, another year in the, um, in the defense right? and just, you know, kind of really tamp down on his technique and hopefully he makes it hard for Meek Robertson to take over. But, yeah. Exa I want the competition. Yeah. I don't want a Meek to just be like, here you go, man. Here's your spot. That's like, that's a huge red flag. Right. If that right. happens. So yeah. it, if, if he can, you know, take a step forward in the, in the, uh, in the scheme this next year, um, I, I think that he can maybe play, you know, at a similar level than what we saw him play in his first couple of years in the Rams when he was yeah. very good uh, slot corner. And he, he probably, yeah, I agree. He wasn't a, a good slot corner for the Raiders last year. And, it, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that they were in nickel. I think they were in nickel like fifth most uh, highest percentage um, for NFL defenses. Oh, that's, in that's interesting. And it, it was like, Except for the um, the Vikings game was the only game where they were in base, like the majority of the game, but every single other game, they were in nickel, like, you know, like 80% of the snaps. Wow. Right? Okay. And so that just basically means he was having to play a linebacker and nickel corner at the same time. He had, he had, he was having to be involved in the run fit on early downs. So hopefully that doesn't happen. He can just really focus on covering um, because we have some, you know, the Raiders added some linebackers um, yeah. that they can be in base maybe a little bit more, but we'll see. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm hopeful that he can take a step forward, but I'm not very optimistic about it. Uh, so, so we'll see, but I don't think that he was a super impactful free safety when he played for the, um, for the Rams. So I, I think Demarius Randall is a better free safety. Than yeah. Trainer, so, so, so you, you would, you would be opposed to him kind of being a free safety over Demarius Randall? Is that what I'm, is that what I'm hearing? I think if Meek Robertson 
Um, if if Amik is going enough. crazy. Yeah, if Amik is just like, wow, that we can't keep this guy off the field. If he showed enough and Demarius Randall got hurt, then I think it would be a It would be okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, again, this is something I'm seeing, something I have a thing, but I got to ask somebody like you to, to really validate it for me. So that makes sense. Um, I just, I, I, it's not even about the contract, man. I just want LaMarcus Joyner to not be a liability because last year it seemed like a liability, but like you said, maybe to hear Whitehead be on the field and guys like that maybe don't get the best out of him. You know what I mean? Littleton and Kwiatkowski is a, a huge upgrade over those guys. I, I mean, I think we all, uh, I think we all can agree with that. Even, even people, casual fans would see that. So, um, the other question I had, and I, I found this fascinating. You're the only person I've seen talk about this. So Markel Lee gets cut, right? He gets cut from the Raiders. He, he had a – I think he was on – was he on the COVID list or something? And people thought, okay, but people were penciling him in on death charts, right, saying, like, he's going to be a backup um, wherever he fits in is wherever he fits in, but he's going to be a backup. He gets cut. Now, you have a guy who played in the CF, CFL, a guy that you were I, – I, I was trying to see if you had a thread on him, but you, you said you couldn't get Canadian – all 22. Yeah, if which, I can uh, get that CFL. I, I did speak to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I did speak to Prime Minister and he said, there's nothing we can do. So, uh, no, not a big deal. But Nick Usher is his name. Tell me a little bit about Nick Usher because I don't, I don't hear anybody talking about this guy. See, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about Nick Usher. I, uh, I did as much digging as I could. Um, he's the guy who – played incredibly well for like the last I think three years in the CFL he went to um Texas El Paso UTEP sure. um and and then came in, into the CFL did he play and with Marcus Davenport was that was he playing with him uh, uh, or is that uh, no, I think it might be before, before, before him yeah you yeah. play because he played in the CFL that makes sense but um but the uh the, the thing about Nick Usher that's really that really interests me is not necessarily because I don't have game film you know, I mean, I've seen his highlights, but his highlights could lie. So I'm not going to sure. really go off the highlights. But it seemed like there was a lot, quite a lot, a few people from the CFL who were saying this guy is a freaking lunatic. This guy is like, he plays with his hair on fire. He's nuts Love out, it. out there. Love it. Um, Wearing number 75, as you said, which is, is psychotic, as, right. you, as you've said. Yeah, to be a defensive end, you're, you're lock him up. Three, yeah. 200 and. 30 pounds or something like that defensive end in the cfl wearing 75 or an o-line number yeah you you, you <laughs> might as well be on a america's most wanted list at that. hell yeah john walsh uh, just is, we found this guy at the border over here yeah 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 no i, I hear you <laughs> yeah okay so that's why i'm interested in him i think that if he is maybe uh i know that on the raiders roster he he's listed as a defensive end but he has a linebacker is he? wow that's crazy i didn't I know even it's know. weird it's weird but he has a linebacker's number, and he's listed as weighing 216 pounds, which is uh, – I think his CFL playing weight was like 230. 16. That's yeah, me after a few beers and a tough I, night I, at five guys. Weird. Like, that's insane. Weird. I, don't, uh, I don't know what is up with his weight. He's definitely yeah. not defensive end. Um, maybe he might be a, a little bit of a sub uh, rusher if he, if he makes the roster. But um, if, if he is asked to play, you know, linebacker, he could do something that um, Paul Gunther got – kind of in the defense that he ran uh, this last year for the Raiders where they had an outside linebacker stand up on the line as a rusher. Okay. And usually that was like Nicholas Morrow if, uh, or if they were nickel uh, towards the end of the year, sometimes it was to hear Whitehead before um, Bontes perfect got suspended. Um, but if you're having a third linebacker in the game, you've got a guy maybe with a little bit of pass rushing juice um, but at, this, at the end of the day, he's not big enough to play defensive in the NFL. So no. if he does make the roster, it's going to have to be, you know, as one of those reserve linebacker spots. And what I think that he has a little bit of an edge over, I know everyone loves this Javen White guy out of UNLV. Hand up, that's um, He has he – what he has the edge over these guys is, is that he's already played professional football for three years. Granted, he hasn't played in the NFL, but he's, you know, shown that he can keep his body healthy – um, playing against grown men, uh, and he's a pass rusher, whereas these guys are, which is a, more of a premium skill set than, you know, a cover linebacker, especially when, if we're talking about Javen White making the roster, um, you got Tanner Muse, who's a safety, you got Corey Littleton, you got Nicholas Morrow, so how many, you know, cover linebackers yeah, are you uh, going to have ball, on the yeah. roster, right? Um, you might want a guy who maybe could, you know, add something in as a rush a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm, I'm interested in, um, 
seeing if Nick Escher makes the team and, and how – and if he does make the team, how he's used. But all I heard was that he's freaking nuts. So that's why, that's why I'm intrigued about him. Do you, do you think preseason games would have really helped him, huh? You, you think? Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. going to be the, the shitty part about all this is that he doesn't have – I mean, and I, I'm one of those guys where it's like I don't mind not having a preseason with all this. So I'm like, let's not waste – these horror yeah. stories of COVID tests on preseason games. I want to waste them on regular season games. So that's, that's the way I'm looking at it. So I, I, I'm okay with that, but a guy like him and even uh, was it Javin white, whatever his name is from UNLV, even guys like that, like preseason's going to, going to hurt. I mean, unless they expand the practice squad, what I think is going to happen is I think eventually what's going to happen is they're going to make practice squad, maybe either expand the practice squad or make half your practice squad active. You know what I mean? Didn't they already game. expand the practice squad to like? I think they did. I think they expanded it. Now, what I think is you're going to have active guys, like not active, like because you're going to know right before the game, right? But like, I, I think there's going to be I, they got to expand the roster size at some point. So I think a lot of these guys might just make the team by default. They got they got to give them some flexibility. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to have something. Knows, right. yeah. yeah. So yeah. so so with Nick Usher, uh, that was just some. I've never heard anybody talk about him. Like besides, besides you. So I was just like, I remember the name. I was doing a, a episode just on linebackers and secondary. And I didn't even, I was like, well, what is that? I'm not talking about him. He was with Ukeme Aligwe who just got cut. I was like, nah, these guys aren't making the team. So yeah, I, I look, didn't, he might get cut. He might get cut, but I'm just, he I'm hasn't just, yet. He survived. He, sur he survived that first uh, wave. So right. I think you're onto something. I'm not saying he's going to make the final, uh, whatever the number is of, of roster. Like he's not going to, you know, he might not, but he's still, he's still standing. So we'll I, I thought it was worth talking about. <laughs> so lastly, um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, lastly, what I want to say is one, give me a hot take on the season. Could be about anything. Give me one hot take, one that you're just like, Hey, you know, it might happen, but just one thing, it could be one player could be yeah, the team yeah, yeah. overall. And then give me a record prediction. All right. Um, I, I hate the hot takes. You know, I like to, I like to, no, I know you do, but I'm putting you on the spot. Um, wow. All right. Let's see here. What, what was something I was thinking about? Okay. I think that, um, gosh, I really don't have any hot takes, honestly. Um, I do think that, I think this might be a little bit of a hot take because everyone in Raider Nation, or not everyone, but most people in Raider Nation hate Cleveland Farrell. I think he's going to acquit himself this year. I'll, I'll say that. I think that um, people quit. Are gonna, I thought you were going to say quit. I was like, no, oh, Jesus. I, I, think, I think he's yeah. going <laughs> yeah, to gain I'll some quit. momentum amongst okay. the fans um, this year. Uh, hopefully, you know, they can appreciate his all-around game and not just worry about um, statistics. But I do think his statistics will be much better this year. So, I'll, I'll go with uh, eight sack season from Cleveland. Farrell. Eight? Okay. I think eight's a good number. I, I had him at about six and a half, but I'm kind of a hater. So um, <laughs> I don't hate the guy. I think he's awesome. Like, I think he's like an awesome dude. I just, I was talking about it with Marcus Johnson. Like, we were just kind of like, man, if he had actually like done the combine, I'm not sure he goes as high. You know what I mean? Cause like, it just, he doesn't have that like explosiveness. And it's not anything technique wise or anything. It's just like, that speed, you know, like the combine freak thing that he's missing might put a ceiling on him. You know, us fans, we really love to hear about pass rushers that have, that are like twitchy and have a lot of bend and something like mm -hmm. explosive and stuff like that. Um, but the NFL isn't as high on those guys as, okay. as those are, you know, the NFL wants guys who can play all downs, set the edge um, and play against the run yeah. and not get, not get pushed around. You know, at at, the, at that point, if you're just a super twitchy guy who can run circles around defensive ta or offensive tackles, um, you're just a sub player. You know, if if you can't play the run, so the NFL isn't at, quite as high as fans are about those guys. Um, if if it if there was no running the football allowed in the NFL, yeah, those guys would Agreed. be yeah, ama amazing. But uh, if you're getting shoved off the ball um, in a, in a run play, you're kind of useless and. Uh, it just takes one offense corner to be like, well, hey, why would I pass the ball if this guy's over yeah. here? We can freaking throw out the club here. So, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, um, the NFL really likes guys who can play, you know, who, who are big bodied, strong guys, tough guys who don't get pushed around. Uh, and I think that it's, it, it, at least last year, Cleveland Furl's ability to, to play against the run was leaps and bounds better than rushing the passer. Uh, so it remains to be seen what kind of juice he's picked up in this offseason. 
Um, working with Rob Marinelli isn't going to hurt because he's considered, no. widely considered to be the best defensive line coach in all of football. So oh, God, uh, I think God. that that should also help him see uh, a little bit of a little. He looks bit more big fun. too. He yeah. looks like he he looks like he put on a little something like too. Like you, I I want to see him. To me, I don't see the speed. So I'm like, well, you got to come up with some power. And I know last year they said he got really sick, lost about you know some 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 weight. I remember on the Chicago game, I remember he got yeah. sick the London game and he, and he, and he just, he lost a little weight, didn't have the power that he has. Cause I don't know if the speed's ever going to be there, um, yeah. but he's a, but he's a technician. Right. So I do think that him just getting a little bigger, he looks great. You know what I mean? Like I, I've seen him in the thing. So maybe just adding a little power to his game. Maybe that's what he needed, you know? And, yeah. and there's, there's a good, a good chance that that happens. What do you think about him playing inside though? Do you, do you like that? Or is that, I know that's what the scheme's asking of him, but is that something you, I like him from the edge. Yeah, that was that was weird, honestly. Um, and, and really, they bounced around a lot of guys. They had Arden Key at some point inside, being, huh? Um, rushing from the inside. They That's had weird. Jordan at, at some point. Cleveland Farrell was doing it, and I think it was just because they lacked pass rushing uh, abilities. Right. So they were just trying to figure out any way that they can generate a pass rush, uh, see who could rush over the three technique. Um, I actually don't dislike that. I like. I like. Um, I think that that would be a solid trajectory for his career the guys who played base end and then were a three technique um pass rusher on pass downs guys like michael bennett that wouldn't be a bad career trajectory oh god i would love that uh for clean and furl and um he does have ha have a lot of power um in comparison to you know like what you're saying he doesn't have a lot of speed in you know maybe in comparison to other edge rushers in the nfl so um but what was interesting to me is that when they did let him rush from the edge, when they weren't asking him to, you know, stop the run, he had some good um, pass rush um, games, but that was like three games. <laughs> so, and against so. Trey Pipkins, the left tackle who shouldn't be in football for, right. uh, for LA. You know, I, yeah, I, I yeah. agree. I see what you're saying. Um, I, I thought it was, I don't know. I, the third down package is, is really interesting to me where you could have, like I, I'm, I'm a big believer. Me and Marcus Johnson are huge believers in the Mohurst breakout year. We're, we're huge believers in that. With Rod Marinelli, um, PJ Hall gone because for whatever reason, PJ Hall just, you know, he just got cut and and tried to trade him, didn't pass the physical. It just wasn't working. PJ Hall was getting like was had a higher snap count than Mohurst. So I just I'm scared of putting Farrell inside and losing the rush the pass rush of like having Collins and Hurst on the inside, who I think are both better at rushing inside than Farrell. Yes. You know, and then you have Farrell and Crosby and I, and you know, those guys outside, I'm just a little scared of like kicking Farrell inside. And then what you take off the field by doing that. So the reason why I don't really think that Farrell is going to rush from the inside from the interior um, too much is because like I was talking about earlier in the show, I watched um, the last four years of the Cowboys defense right. um, on third downs. And what was actually really super interesting to me was how often um, the Cowboys had a three-man line on third and longs, meaning that they were in a, like in a dime defense with only three rushers. And then their fourth rusher who rushed over the guard was a linebacker. Okay. Um, so I really think that we're going to see a lot more of that. The Raiders did that again a little bit against Cincinnati – uh, as far as like getting into a dime and having a three-man line, I see. Um, so yeah, best case scenario, you just got four guys. Maurice Hurst um, can you know be, become a starter or you know play on passing downs or whatever. Um, Malik Collins is a guy who should be in on every single play, um, and then you got two ends, Crosby and, and Furl, who can you know get after the passer. But um, I don't, I didn't see very many instances of Rod Marinelli asking his defensive ends to rush from the interior. So that's why I don't really think that's going to happen too much uh, for the Raiders this year. But to go off of the Maurice Hurst type, I like Maurice Hurst. He cannot stop the run. Yeah, I agree. So the reason why P.J. Hall – P.J. Hall is his name? I'm already, for, I'm already forgetting this You guy. should forget. He's gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the reason why P.J. Hall saw more snaps uh, was because how much emphasis Paul Gunther puts on stopping the run. Right. Um, he, he just put, puts such a huge emphasis on his defense. We we're talking about it earlier with Marcus Joyner having to be in on run fits and that how, how that right. was hurting on passing plays. Um, 
so Paul Gunther put so much of an emphasis on stopping the run, which is why he wanted a guy like Cleveland Furl who could stop the run, um, which is why Maurice Hurst was not a starter because Maurice Hurst cannot stop a double team. He gets blown off the ball when on run plays. Um, so we'll see how much Rod Marinelli changes that thought process. Um, so I think that that would be one of the more interesting kind of, um, you know, behind the scenes, like you can only really find out what the story is by watching the film, how much this defense changes now that Rod, Mar- Rod Marinelli is here. I see. So, okay. So I'm, I'm not going to ask you for a record prediction. Cause I don't think you're, I don't think you're the type of guy that wants to do a record <laughs> prediction. I, I can see it already. I, I, don't, I, can, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't think like you want it. it. Yeah. Okay. One thing. So here's my last question. My absolute last question. I'm going to let you go. I know you're on East Coast time, so this has got to be like you got to have bloodshot eyes by now. But <laughs> the so when you're scrolling through Twitter, you're a Raider fan. You scroll through Twitter. You you follow certain people like me who don't know what the hell they're talking about. Other people, and when you see people try to like actually comment on scheme, what the hell goes through your mind? Do you ever do you have that one thing where you're just like, man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about? Well, no, no. And, and the reason why is because, first of all, I, I, I don't want to come at this like I know more than other people, honestly. Um, because you know, I the guy, you know the guy I'm talking about. The guy who's like, well, in Paul Gunther's scheme, it's this and this. And you're like, no, that's not true. What are you talking about? Like, what are you <laughs> no, talking well, about? You're just saying things. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, yeah. But again, like, I think that there's too many film guys who are like that. And I don't want to be one of those guys who, right. you know, uh, shoots guys down and pretends like they know more than it, more than you know, <laughs> everyone else. Yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't really like those film guys. Um, you know, you can learn a lot on Twitter. Um, I've, you know, I, I played college football, so I learned a lot then. And then after I got done playing, I was still a football junkie. So I would like download playbooks and I would just learn, learn, learn. And the more you learn, the more you realize that there are things that you don't know. So uh, I, see, I, I don't, I don't want to be one of those guys that is like, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, I, that wouldn't be me. So, yeah. So there's a lot of guys that, cause I, I do know a lot of people. They're like, Nope, there's no nuance to this. This is what it is. This is exactly what it is. Look at, you'll see this example right here. This is what happened. You're wrong. I'm right. Like you see a lot of people doing that. Um, I, in my head, I can tell, not like I can tell, but I can see people kind of say, oh, well, in this system fit, it's da, 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 da. I'm like, you don't, you don't know. You don't know that. You know what I mean? And, and in my head, I, I feel like I know that. So I've always wanted to ask somebody who is like a film junkie who, who can tell when somebody's kind of bullshitting a little bit. <laughs> That's, I, I, you know what I mean? Well, I've done it a little bit myself. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I just, uh, I always thought I, it was don't we all, don't we all BS, you know I mean? Of if, course. If, you, you, you got to be a BS or a little bit on Twitter at, at the end of the day. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I am here with BD Williams. He is a contributor to silver and black pride. I do uh, ask that you go and check out his work over there because that was where I first saw you. This is a long time ago. Um, and then you're a contributor to just blog, baby. Um, say your Twitter handle one more time uh bd williams 18 at yeah BD please williams please follow him he's got threads anytime the raiders sign somebody any something something like that you're usually the first guy i see that i can be like all right well i think he's good but let me see what what bd's talking about you know what i mean like so it, it's a Thanks, good kind of yeah i know truly um uh you're the second guest on this podcast uh and uh, thanks so much for joining me. I don't have the, the viewership that probably uh, you're going to be expecting, but you know what? I, I think a lot of people are going to like it. Uh, no, no, not at all. Hey, man, I, I really appreciate the, you, you having me on. Um, sharing those film clips, was a, that's the first time I've done that on a podcast. So that, that's Really? Cool. Uh, yeah. Hey, it was great. The first time I've had film. You know what I mean? I've done screen share on, like, Twitter and stuff where I'll just be like, hey, look at this dumb tweet somebody said. Like, I've, I've – <laughs> but it's not an actual moving – thing so um no i uh, hopefully it came out good i will we'll find out we're i, I don't want to speak too soon so uh <laughs> but uh yeah um once again um follow him on twitter and uh you can check me out i'm at uh, uh you might want to watch this on youtube actually uh like you said before the nfl takes it down i am i was thinking about that and that's gonna suck if that happens but whatever uh there is audio as well but uh subscribe to the rare candy uh uh youtube page i'm at glenn rockney at g-l-e-n-r-o-c-k-n-e-y and um yeah that's i i think that's i think that's it for us man i, I really appreciate you joining me thanks for having me on glenn i yeah, appreciate that no no problem no problem all right guys